Zorin OS is one of those Linux distributions that points it towards as suitable for brand new Linux users. And I think that's one of the reasons why I've never actually given it much of a try. Now, I think I've installed it like maybe one time a couple years ago. I don't really remember. I didn't stay on it for very long. But mostly because it's been a long time since I've been a new Linux user now. At least a new Linux user in terms of like actually a new Linux user instead of just being a perpetual noob, which is what I proclaim myself to be. So recently Zorn has released their brand new Zorn OS 16 beta. So I thought today we'd take a look at that and see what's new and see what Zorn OS is all about. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the announcement. The first thing it says it has is a stunning new look. Now I won't be able to judge whether or not this is actually a new look because I have no clue what it really looked like before, but I will say that from the pictures at least, it looks like it's really pretty. Now, one of the things that a lot of people enjoy about like Deepin is that it is different than other operating systems, or other distros I should say, in that it focuses a lot more on aesthetics. Things like Ubuntu and even just GNOME itself and KDE even. They're more focused on functionality than they are in terms of making things look super pretty. So you could say distros like Zorin and Deepin both kind of go by the Apple philosophy of design. They want to go through and make sure everything looks super pretty. So uh, Zorin OS 16 has a refreshed design with a revamped and refined appearance out of the box. We've introduced a new, more polished default theme that's easier on the eyes. You'll find Detailed touches and delightful animations throughout the system that elevate your computing experience. So, I will just put this on the record. I don't think animations will ever, quote, elevate your computing experience. For the most part, I think animations are a complete waste of computing resources, but people like them. So, uh, whatever. So, there's some new wallpapers, a new lock screen. This just basically looks like the new GNOME lock screen. Uh, faster and smoother performance, we'll see about that. I don't know, like I said, I can't compare it, but we'll see if it's fast. A larger app library, because FlatHub is now included in the store itself. So, Zorn supports FlatHub, Snap, and the Ubuntu and Zorn OS app repositories out of the box. It seems to be one of those distros that is actually supporting both Flatpaks and Snaps, directly out of the box. There's not too many of those because like, so Ubuntu itself supports snaps out of the box, but doesn't support flat packs out of the box. You have to install it. Mint is the opposite, other way around. And I mean, there are several other ones that are either choose one side or the other. Zorin seems to have chosen both. And that's kind of cool. And it's definitely different than, like I said, what other distributions seems to have done. The built-in software store has also received many under the hood optimizations as well as user interface improvements to make it even easier to find and install apps from different sources. So I believe they're just going to be using the GNOME Software Center to do this. We'll find out. So there's a new getting started easier with a tour. I will admit when I first installed it, I did not see this. So I'm going to have to actually see if that shows up this next time. A navigate quicker with touchpad gest gestures. So that won't be anything I'll be able to test because I don't have a touchpad. But one of the things that many Linux distributions are doing now is really focusing on the touchpad gestures. I know Elementary OS 6 is planning on doing that. I know that Fedora just recently had something that did uh, better with the gestures. I'm pretty sure Ubuntu also just had something that came out when 21.04 that worked way better with the gestures. So uh, this isn't a surprise. It's also nice to see. A new sound recorder app because awesome. Uh, a more customizable taskbar. A redesigned Zorn appearance. So, from what I know, Zorn appearance seems to be a fork of like GNOME tweak tools, uh, only with the extensions ability pulled out. So, uh, I'll talk more about the extensions thing when we get to there. We'll also look at the different layouts they have. Uh, and they also have a new Windows 10X like desktop layout that is apparently coming soon. I'm not sure how I feel about all this white space over here. I'm just saying. Uh, Jelly Mode, undoubt, undoubtedly the most groundbreaking and revolutionary feature we've ever included, Jelly Mode, will fundamentally change how you use your computer forever. Um, so they've introduced Wobbly Windows. 
I'm pretty sure that was in Linux forever. So, I mean, obviously they were being sarcastic up there, which is nice that they have a sense of humor, at least. Other improvements, fractional scaling for high resolution d displays. Uh, star files easily, so that's going to be something that comes with uh, the GNOME Files app, so a Nautilus. Better f fingerprint reader support, unread message badges, and progress bars for taskbar icons. Uh, display QR code for easily connect to your devices via Wi-Fi. The settings app now has a refined category layout that's easier to navigate. Uh, let's see here, based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So this is going to be based on the last LTS that came out. Uh, last year. So let's go ahead and jump in and install this. So we're going to be installing this in VirtualBox. So we'll just make sure it's selected here and hit start. Get us into full screen. It's going to do its traditional checks. This is just something that normal distributions based on Ubuntu uh, do since the 20.04 release. Uh, custom logo at the startup, so that's cool. Nice animation. So we're just going to go ahead and install Zorin. Well, this is the traditional Ubuntu installer, so this shouldn't be too much of a surprise here. There is this extra checkbox here, so that first of all, there doesn't seem to be a minimal install at all. Uh, so they've taken that part out. So you can download updates, install third-party software. We don't need to install updates. I'll do that after. Or I guess I usually do that after, I should say. Uh, there's also this thing here, do not participate in the census. So basically what they do, by default, they'll send uh, the fact that you're installing Zorn back to their server so that they can kind of keep count of how many users they have. I'm going to uh, check that so they don't send that information back because I'm not going to be keeping this. No sense in padding their numbers. So we have no option here for... A different version of the file system because this is despite this being Ubuntu there's no option for uh, what is it ZFS is that what that's called I think and so that's interesting that they've taken that out uh, I'm not sure what they'll use uh, they'll probably just go ahead and use uh, ext4 but uh, we'll check that out after install so we'll go ahead and install now continue uh, oops press the button that works and we'll type in our credentials here call this Zorin VM and choose a strong password and press continue and we'll just wait for this install now I will cut the video away and bring it back once it's done okay that took about four and a half five minutes or so let's go ahead and hit the restart button and see if this will actually restart us or if I'll have to go through and actually remove the installation media from VirtualBox. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Looks like it's going to start up just fine, so we'll see how the startup times are like. Now, I will say, just to put this out there, that this is beta software, so we might see some bugs here and there, so we won't hold that against it at all. The startup times here was not horrible so we'll go ahead and sign in so this is what Zorin OS looks like out of the box Zorin OS 16 now I will say that that blog post we looked at told us that there was a new tour or something a new welcome app or something like that I don't see it so whether that's because this is a beta software or it's just that's not what they do I don't know so there doesn't seem to be a welcome app, so let's actually see if we can... F actually, first let's go to the terminal. I always seem to forget to do this first. So we'll zoom in here and do... First we'll do free-m. And out of the box, we're using almost a whole gigabyte of RAM. That is GNOME for you. <laughs> uh, that is quite a lot in terms of uh, resources out of the box with nothing running. So this is definitely not an app, a uh, desktop environment slash distro that you'd want to use on lower end hardware. Now, Zorin OS does have a light version that uses XFCE instead of GNOME. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll take a look at Zorin OS Lite as well. So let's take a look at uh, the kernel. So they're using uh, 
eight, which is quite old, uh, but not the oldest I've seen. So five dot four was the really or the LTS before that. So this is not. I don't. I'm pretty positive that five dot eight is not an LTS release. I think it went five dot four, then five dot ten, if I'm remembering right. But either way, it's not the most recent kernel, not the oldest kernel I've seen because. A lot of the Debian-based distros are still using 5.4, so that takes care of that. Let's go ahead and install NeoFetch and see what we get when we type that in. And I can't type. Worth a damn. Alright. So we get a Zorn logo. Again, 5.8. This is using GNOME with the Mutter Window Manager. Window Manager theme is Zorn Blue Light. Zorn Blue Light for the theme and icons as well. This is the GNOME Terminal, so let's go ahead and go up here. This is GNOME ter Terminal 3.36, so even the GNOME version of some of the applications is fairly outdated. So that's definitely something you're going to keep in mind. Now, it's not a huge deal, because we have to remember, this is being focused towards new users. New Linux users don't really care that they don't have the most recent version of GNOME. And honestly, it's really not at all surprising that the GNOME 40 stuff isn't here because Zorn is focused on doing their own things with UI elements and stuff, so they're not really going to care about the whole revamped GNOME uh, UI that they've released recently. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. Uh, we can not do that. We don't need to do that now. Uh, all right, so because there's not a welcome app, well, we can just go and search and see if there's a welcome app. Here's the tour. Okay. Why this doesn't show up like to begin with, I don't know. So let's go ahead and take a tour. Now, I don't you probably won't be able to hear it, but there's some sound effects going on here. And it's very choppy. Whether that's because of the VM I'm in or not, I don't know. But let's go ahead and start the tour. So open the menu to launch apps. Okay, I'm pretty sure we can get that. Next, choose your desktop. Look with Zorn appearance. So let's go ahead and launch this. We'll look at that now. Now, like I said, I'm pretty sure that this is a forked version of GNOME Tweaks. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of this stuff looks familiar. So if we look here, like there's this part here looks almost precisely like what you'd see in GNOME Tweaks with some added things from Zorn. Same thing with this part here. This looks like you'd get from GNOME Tweaks as well. So they have four different layouts here. They have... Uh, this more traditional, like Windows style layout, and they have a, like a minimal, a smaller version of that same because this is basically the same just with a smaller bar. They have this one here that's a little bit bigger, and this is more traditional GNOME. So this would look this look more like what you'd expect with GNOME, but with dash to dock at the bottom. And then they have this one here, which is basically a. This is basically GNOME as well. Uh, that more is more in style with traditional GNOME without the dash to dock stuff. Okay, so uh, we can just go back to this one here. Uh, the themes that they have installed, um, the Zorn stuff, you can do dark themes, which is what I think they probably should do by default because dark, dark themes are always better. And then they have some accent colors here as well. We'll choose red because why not? And then in the other installed, they have Atawata and high contrast. That's all they have in terms of themes. And then of any extra icon sets as well, just high color and high contrast for accessibility reasons. And nothing for the shell either. So you'd have to install those separately, probably through the terminal. Because that's usually the way you have to, because like I said, there's no, probably through the terminal, because you don't have any access to extensions or anything like that here, as far as I can tell. Now, GNOME comes with a application separate for extensions, but as far as I can tell, that's not actually here. So if we type in extensions, you don't get anything like that. Now, I'm assuming you could probably install that uh, if you wanted to install some extensions, but again, this is focused on new users, so they're probably not going to be focusing on that like at all. The fact that they even include something that is like a pared down version of GNOME Tweak Tool is actually an advancement on what actual GNOME does because actual GNOME you can't do any of this stuff out of the, lo the box. So let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, 
we'll go back to the white version here and just do this. Yeah. It's weird that the accent color changes the color of the window itself, but not a big deal. All right, let's go ahead and hit next. So speed up your virtual machine. Zornos has detected that you're using a virtual machine to improve performance, install the extensions for your virtualization software and restart the system. So this is basically just so you can install guest editions. I don't need to do that, but that's cool that they offer. Uh, connect your online accounts. So that's something that Ubuntu usually offers you to do. Link your phone and your computer with Zorn Connect, which is just going to be a fork of GS Connect, I believe is what it's called. Uh, the fact that they've rebranded it is, you know, not surprising. And use software to finance all apps. We'll look at the software center here in a few minutes. Uh, Office Suite for work. So it comes with LibreOffice installed. You can, it also gives you an option to install OnlyOffice. I used OnlyOffice for the first time the other night. It is god awful. It's so bad. Uh, it's not as bad as WPS because WPS doesn't ex doesn't actually support ODT, but um, that's a rabbit hole for another time. Uh, let's go ahead and hit next. That's it. We hope that you enjoy ZornOS. So that's not the. It's a neat tour, but it's you know not groundbreaking or anything. So that, it does give you a link here to go to a help page in case you need help. So again, focused on new users. So that's not a horrible tour experience at all. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the software center. Now, I installed this one before off camera just to make sure that I could get it installed on VirtualBox because I just installed VirtualBox again after I hopped. So, uh, when I installed, when I clicked the software center, I got something really surprising. So, let's see if it does it again. Yeah, that's just incredible. So, if you know anything about the GNOME software center, which is what this is, I mean, I'm Sure it is. It looks exactly the same, right? It's just, maybe it's a fork of it, but still. You know that the GNOME Software Center, especially the ones that are built using the Snap version of it, are slow. I mean, they're just so slow to launch, at least, right? You click on the, the app, and it takes 35, 40, 50, maybe even a whole minute just to launch. This was instantaneous. That's just incredible. I, I was just blown out of my socks because it's awesome. I mean, literally, I have no socks on anymore. Uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and go shopping. So basically, I believe that said this is just the GNOME Software Center. So that if you type this, it's just software. Yep. But it's like it's not going to be the Snap version that Ubuntu uses. So it's just going to probably the be the regular old GNOME software that they used to use. And really... This is pretty great, and it seems to be pretty fast. And there's got this drop down here, so you can actually choose which you'd rather you install this from. The Snap Store has several versions that you can use because Snap does versioning a lot better. You can also d download it from the Zorn repositories or FlatHub. So that's just great. Now I I haven't used a GNOME software that actually has that functionality to allow you to install from different places uh, before. But if I remember right, it's in like a drop-down box in other versions of this. The fact that they put this front and center is really awesome. Now, like I said, that might be somewhere else. That might be used elsewhere too, and I just don't remember, but that's pretty great. Being aimed towards new users, that might confuse some people, but I think for people who actually know what they're doing, that's pretty great. So we can just go ahead and close this. Now, the next thing we can do is go through and take a look at some of the apps. So we'll start with accessories. We have clocks, files, maps. These are going to be basically GNOME software applications. About maps, yep, GNOME maps. So we're expecting a lot of the GNOME stuff here. Text editor, to do. This is going to be probably GNOME to do, right? Uh, I forget GNOME to do doesn't actually have a drop down for the about. That's okay. Weather. Games coming installed, we have Solitaire, Mahjong, Mines. I'm pretty sure that this is basically... I don't know what that is. What is that? I, I've never heard of that game before. Um, what do you do? Is it, oh, we got to put play. Oh, this is... It's Tetris. Okay. Well, now we're going to play... Oh. I wonder how you rotate pieces. We're going to play some Tetris. Okay, so you rotate pieces by up and down buttons. Or the up button. Or up arrow, I should say.
This is really what you wanted to do. You tuned in to watch me play Tetris, right? Oops. I'm really bad at Tetris. <laughs> Alright, we can stop this. Um, close that. <laughs> Anyways, that's cool. Um, what else we got here? Game in terms of games. Uh Sudoku. Okay. So just the basic games. Graphics. We have GIMP installed by uh default. We have photos, which is this is uh GNOME photos. Is that possible what this is? Oops, I this was what I was looking for. Yeah, this is GNOME Photos, but it's an old version of GNOME Photos, 3.34. So it's even older than the rest of the software. We also have LibreOffice Draw and uh, Image Viewer here. So in the internet, we have Firefox and a remote desktop tool. Okay. Office, this is LibreOffice, nothing special here. The calendar is going to be GNOME Calendar, probably GNOME Contacts as well. Sound and video, we have Becero, Cheese, and a... Pativi? I've never heard of that before. Now, this is a video editor. Well, we're going to have to give that a try someday. I've been looking for a new video editor. Um, I can tell you that I don't like that accent color. So when we get to Gnome Parents, we're going to change that. <laughs> So let's see here. We got rhythm box for music, sound recorder, and videos. That's going to be uh, probably GNOME videos. Uh, system tools. This is going to be the traditional system stuff here. Nothing special. Tours or an appearance. We're going to change that accent color. because We just really do have to do that. Weirdly, you can't not have an accent color. So, Okay, yeah, that blue is way better than that the red okay so utilities get on discs is here get the disc uses the analyzer uh nothing out of the ordinary here like so we were in you know terminal before so those are the applications that are installed in ter terms of looks and feels so let's take a look at so like this is nautilus here and it is pretty this whole system here is very pretty now, I don't get any of the fancy effects because I'm, I don't have that enabled in VirtualBox, but apparently there are a lot of animations and stuff that enhance your user, your computer experience. And we all know how I feel about that, but if you're using this on hardware, you probably get access to, this, to that as well. Uh, in terms of, like I said, appearance, this is really great. I mean, it's just very pretty. For new users, a lot of times aesthetics matter more than functionality because they want you to think that this is as close to a Windows experience as you can get. Now, I'm not going to say that this is the most Windows experience I've ever seen. I personally think that XFCE does a way better job of mimicking Windows than GNOME does because GNOME has some just some weird things that it does that windows doesn't do so you know it's just those little things that gnome puts in the little aesthetics tweaks and stuff that kind of differentiates it from windows now like i said xfce on the other hand i think like i said just does a better job of mimicking windows if it's styled correctly so maybe i will take a look at the zoran light thing someday anyways that is zoran os 16 beta we didn't go through all the new features and stuff but i can't really go through and tell you hey this is what's new and this is how it's new and tell you any, you know, in my experience, how it's changed because I didn't use it before. So when the se the 17th version comes out, I'll at least be able to compare them. Uh, but for now, it's a just a decently styled version of GNOME is the way I'd put it. Uh, I think it's probably a good thing, a, a, a good distro for new users because it's basically Ubuntu, but prettier because let's face it, Ubuntu is getting a little stale. Uh, but so if you're into a distribution that uh, uses Ubuntu but looks pretty, Zorn is definitely something that you should check out. So thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. If you're a tier 2, 3, 4, or 5 sub uh, supporter, you can get early access to some of our videos. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, make sure you check that out. I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, 
Maglin, Donnie, Sven, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.